Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name's Connor. I'm Clay. I'm Raven. Lincoln. I'm Holly. And we're Group 396D. And we were tasked with designing a dream roof which would be placed on the Queen Solar Decathlon Team Solar Home, as shown in this picture above. So four months ago, we were approached by our client, Amelia, who came, asked us to design a green roof, which had met the four, sorry, the five principal requirements here. First was that the green roof had to be free-floating, which meant it has to be completely autonomous from the house, serve an educational purpose for the public, be affordable, self-sustaining, and also safe and simple. We were also faced with the unprecedented challenge, however, of making the green roof mobile, which meant that the green roof would essentially have to be rolled up or removed from the roof from the roof of the solar home every time the home was being transported. So as we began to look at the problem, we looked at who our green roof, green roof would benefit. So we realized that the immediate stakeholders would be the solar decathlon team, as adding this green roof would immediately bolster the eco-friendly profile of their already very eco-friendly home. Looking in the more long term, however, we realized that the greatest benefits would be reaped by society and the potential occupants of the house. And so we come today with a design that not only meets all of the aforementioned requirements, but also yields a great, has greater implications for society at large and the people that we designed it for. So I'm going to pass along to Clay, who's going to give some background on the project. All right, so in order to better understand our presentation, I'm going to give you a bit of background information regarding materials and functionality of our green roof. So our green roof uses an extensive system. An extensive green roof is also known as a low-profile roof or a performance roof. This means that it has many functional purposes while also maintaining a low weight and cost. Also, we decided to implement a pre-cultivated vegetative blanket. This blanket can be, comes pre-rolled with the soil and plant material and can then be unrolled on the roof, also making it very mobile and light. Uh, as seen here, these are the typical layers of an extensive green roof. Each one is crucial in uh, making the roof function as it should, but they are not specific to our design, so we won't cover them right now. Alright, so regarding functionality of a green roof, uh, the main functional purpose of a green roof is its storm water runoff capabilities. So one in five storms is capable of overrunning a typical storm water system. The green roof helps mitigate this by lowering the rate at which water leaves the roof, as well as returning a portion of the water to the atmosphere. Green roofs are also very energy efficient. They do this by reducing the heat flux through the roof, which effectively lowers heating and cooling costs for the homeowner. Lastly, green roofs are very effective at improving air quality. They do this by trapping dust particles in the air, as well as lowering urban temperatures during the summer months. We believe that we designed our green roof in order to effectively meet each of these functional purposes. I'm now going to pass it on to Raymond, who's going to explain the specifics of our design. After looking at all the background information learned, we were able to develop three different design solutions. The first being broken down into parts, while the others as a full, complete system. After analyzing an, evalu an evaluation matrix uh, with such factors as maintenance, cost, durability, uh, it was seen <coughs> that Design Solution 2 came out on top as our chosen design. Looking at a bird's eye view of this design, uh, we can see that the green roof spans at 950 feet squared with, on either side, planks of wood. It's important to note that our that all the layers of the green roof are nailed onto these planks of wood. <coughs> we chose this design for several factors. First, being its free-floating nature. We can see that the hook is screwed onto the planks of wood, where the marlin braid rope is wrapped around this to the extruded beam from the solar panel. <coughs> Again, it's important to note that this hook is only screwed onto the plank of wood and not on the pre-existing home, therefore sustaining its free-floating nature. This corner view further emphasizes the fact that all the layers of the green roof are nailed onto the planks of wood. Our second factor is mobility. Since all the layers are nailed onto the planks of wood, it has the ability to roll or unroll into each other as shown here, similar to scrolls rolling around fixed poles. This feature emphasizes its um, efficiency in transportation, transportation, time, and space for where our uh, green roof is required to do. Uh, our final factor is safety. Uh, our green roof weighs at a total of 96 kilonewtons with 
a water absorption of 75%. Uh, it must reach a safety factor of 1.5 and must therefore support a load of 144 kilonewtons. However, the pre-existing home supports a maximum load of 211 kilonewtons, which is well below the threshold. I'm going to pass this off to Mike to talk about the practicality of our prototype. The team designed and built a prototype to test three key components of our green roof solution, being mobility, water retention, and growth. The mobility test was conducted by removing the biomass, rolling and unrolling the layers, and reinstalling the plants onto the green roof. This test was conclusive in proving, proving that the layers of the green roof are highly mobile and therefore our design solution is highly effective in this manner. The image on the right shows the apparatus used to test water retention of our green roof. Water was added to the basin on the top and trickled down onto the green roof plants below and even, while being evenly distributed. The purpose of this test was to determine whether or not the green roof would absorb at least 50% of the water added to it. The results show that the green roof retained over 80% of the water, only leaking 250 milliliters of the 1,529 added to it. The final test was the growth test, where the conditions of the Kingston Auto region were simulated over the course of four weeks simulating precipitation and sunlight, sun, sunlight of this region. The results from this test show that the plants could easily survive and thrive under these conditions and in this environment. The last component that our group investigated for our design solution was the, was the economics. As a result, a thorough economic analysis was conducted. As you can see from this graph, there are three main trends, the first being the initial investment which comes to a total cost of $14,000. This cost includes 25% extra factored in, which includes extra memories and transportation costs. This also, it also includes a $500 lump sum amount to be included for the maintenance of the green roof. From the second trend, the cumulative savings with increasing energy prices, it can be seen from play that green roofs reduce energy prices. And as a result, by after 28 years, our green roof will break even. Furthermore, if we ignore how energy prices increase, we will still get a flat amount back every year. And as a result, after 32 years, our green roof will still break even, which comes to a total savings of $37,000, which is a 150% return on investment. We can see from the economic analysis that our green roof is cheap, well under the budget of the solar design team, which, is, which comes to a total of 17%, and it is very feasible to implement. So overall, our design solution clearly meets the criteria set forth by Amelia and the solar design team. It is feasible, <coughs> it is free-floating and mobile, and it is only 17% of the budget given by the solar design team. Furthermore, it is going to be a good fit for the potential occupants of the house. What we mean by that is once the future homeowners move in, they are going to have a solar home and a green roof to improve their quality of life. Now looking back on the past four months, there are two main ways that our group has decided that we could have improved our design solution. The first being a stronger focus on mobility. What we as a team mean by that is we should have investigated more on how moving and transporting green roofs affect, affects the health of the plants. Secondly, we should have investigated primary sources instead of just relying on internet sources for the duration of the project. We should have contacted green roof companies and see if they have any feedback or any suggestions on how to go about our project making our green roof free floating and mobile. As for the learning we did in the past four months, we have learned many things, ranging from technical concepts onto how to managing projects. For technical concepts, we have learned how to create cohesive technical reports, conduct thorough economic analysis, and moreover, we have also... Crap, I forgot. And how to create professional drawings. As for team dynamics, we as a group realized that after the first meeting, a group of friends works better as a whole, and as, and as a result, we learned each other's strengths and weaknesses and catered the, catered the roles to each and every individual's strengths and weaknesses. This allowed our team to be effective and efficient in creating our design solution. Furthermore, we realized that all of us are leaders, and as a result, we communicated regularly and ensured that everyone met on time, adhered to the timelines and goals set out by the group. This directly ties into how we manage the project. We had a timeline, we followed it, and overall, our group was successful in completing the project and giving a design solution for our client. Going forward next year, we are going to include everything we have learned this far and hoping, and hoping that our next year's design project 
will give us even more knowledge to go forth with. Sweet. Yeah, it's for cool. watching. Yo.